The 17th century saw the evolution of calculus. The wealthy and influential people, aristocrats, who had far too much free time, resorted to mathematics. Pierre de Fermat was one of these people. Fermat helped pioneer many fields of mathematics. He tried his hand at various different fields such as analytic geometry, probability, and most notably, number theory, which is where he created his last theorem. However, Fermat did not start his life pursuing mathematics. Pierre de Fermat was born in beaumont alon France between late 1607 and early 1608. Fermat was born to a rich businessman father, Dominique Fermat, and an aristocratic mother, Claire Dallon, Dominique's <gasps> second wife. He had three siblings, two sisters, Louise and Marie, and a brother, Clément. Little record exists of Fermat's early childhood, though we do know that his mother passed away when he was seven years old. Since he was born into a well-off family, it is assumed that he was given a good education, though there is no record of it, and there are no notions of him leaning towards mathematics at an early age. It was at the age of 19 when he moved to Bordeaux, after receiving a bachelor's degree in civil law from the University of Orleans. There he dove deeper into mathematics and formed a hobby of restoring old math books, one being Plain Loci of Apollonius, a book on hyperbolic geometry. This sparked Fermat's interest in what is known today as analytical geometry. At the time, Jean de Beaugrand, Étienne de Spongier, and François Vieux were his main influences. He eventually moved to Toulouse around 1643 to become a civil counselor where he served at local parliament. This still left him plenty of time to keep up with his mathematical hobbies and explore more of the vast world of mathematics and its various subjects. On analytic geometry, Fermat generalized the formula for the ordinary parabola as ay equals x squared and the rectangular hyperbola as xy equals a squared. This became known as parabola and hyperbola of Fermat. Just the same, he generalized the Archimedean spiral as r equals a theta and would use these to make a rule equivalent to differentiation, allowed him to find the local minimums and maximums as well as inflection points. Descartes also discovered analytic geometry at the same time. However, since Fermat never published any of his work, Descartes is generally credited for its creation. Through letters that Fermat shared with other mathematicians of the time, he would also pioneer other fields. Inspired to find the odds of winning a gambling game of the time, Fermat and Pascal would lay the fundamental groundwork of probability. The two calculated the possible outcomes of the die and put that below the possible outcomes where they won. If you remember with probability from pre-calculus, you can blame these guys. Pierre de Fermat made many contributions to mathematics and science, including finding the center of gravity and even wrote a number theory which is used in encrypting text messages. Fermat's road to calculus started by studying Greek contributions like Diophantus' Arithmetica of 1621, Archimedean spirals, parabolas, and hyperbolas. Ultimately, it was Kepler's study of the shape of a wine cast that sparked Fermat's interest in calculus. Fermat's interest in finding a line intersecting the cast would lead to his development in maxima and minimum problems. Published in 1637, Fermat's manuscript, Methodus ad decorandum maxima e minimum, was a testimony to many of his calculus contributions. Within the book, Fermat names many of his theorems simply as Fermat's theorem, so unless you knew what subject you were talking about, it could mean several things. One of these theorems was if a function f of x is defined on the interval a, b, then there exists a point c, f of c, and a local extremum. If f prime of c exists, then c, f of c must be a critical point of f of x. Simply put, Fermat's theorem was a way to find local or absolute critical points. Back in 1629, 21-year-old Fermat wrote and discovered that a single point P called the tangent. This was Fermat's method. Mathematician Descartes protested the details of his theory, saying Fermat's method was too rigorous and his own development of finding the tangent was clear and concise. Fermat denied this and a long argument ensued, thus beginning the calculus universe's civil war. I'm joking, but the few did encourage Newton and Leibniz to create formal calculus. The early 17th century raced to modify the Greek method of exhaustion, 
This text would unlock formulas for complex area and volume. Part of this amazing race, Blaise Pascal and Fermat co-developed a formula for finding the area under a curve and above the x-axis using the sum of infinitesimal rectangles. Like most of his works, Fermat would get little recognition as he never published his works for the public eye. Little did Fermat know, this formula became a pre-evolved point in the creation of integral calculus. Pierre de Fermat signed his last judicial notice on January 9, 1665, in the city of Castres, and died three days later on January 12, 1665. He left the earth with a very troubling problem. Five years after his death, his son Clément Samuel unearthed and published Fermat's last theorem. Take a look at the problem. If n is a whole number greater than 2, the equation has no whole number for x, y, and z. In the accompanying journal, Fermat wrote, I have discovered a truly marvelous proof of this, which this margin is too narrow to contain. Speculation began that this was false. It may seem harmless at first, but hundreds of famous mathematicians, including Leonard Euler, and is pronounced Euler, not Euler, flocked to this problem. Many were led towards the theorem, only to be drawn away by a great depression. It was a drug for intellects. It was until 1997. 350 years later, a man named Andrew Wiles presented a 200-page proof. Unfortunately, massive hyperinflation in Germany after the First World War meant that Wiles only received 50,000 pounds. Wiles received a knighthood. Oxford's math department moved into his house, and it was even rumored that Gap asked him to endorse its range of menswear. Tamar, I was sitting here at this desk, when suddenly, totally unexpectedly, I had this incredible revelation. It was the most, uh, the most important moment of my working life. Nothing I ever do again will. These stories of defeat and conquer began with one French lawyer turned calculus forerunner, Pierre de Fermat.